Okay, so in this video, we are going to continue our discussion of, of volume when we take a bounded region and revolve it around an axis. And in today's examples, we're going to be looking at specifically how to use the washer method. Okay, so if we're looking at um, this picture, which is similar to the one that we had yesterday, and if we look at the original bounded area, we started out with this function here and this function here, whatever these functions are. And we had a boundary at this point. So this area right here was the original area problem. And then they took that particular area and they said to revolve it about the x-axis. So we're revolving it about the x-axis. And when we do that, you'll notice that there is now some space between the bounded area and then the axis right here. So because of that empty space, when we revolve this, um, this area around the x-axis, you're going to see that you have a solid, but the inside of the solid has a void. Okay, so it's sort of a hollowed out um, bowl. Okay, so after we revolved, here's the other half. That's the other half of our solid, and then we revolved it. So you've got sort of this bowl with a hole in it. And you'll notice that um, when you go to look at what the cross sections look like, the cross sections are now washer. Okay, so they're basically the same thing as what we had before. We have these disks, but the disks have a hollowed out center. Okay, so if we're looking at the cross section of one of these washers, that's what we get. We get a disk with a hole in it. Okay, so it looks just like a washer. <clears throat> and so, so our idea is going to be similar as what we had with the disk problem, where we want to find the volume of one washer, and then we want to sum them up over some interval. Okay, so and then summing up those volumes would be the same thing as taking an integral over that uh, particular interval. Okay, so if we are looking at just the um, top view of a washer, okay, so this is my top view of the washer. If we're looking at this, <clears throat> we know that if we wanted to just calculate the area of um, the part that's not hollowed out, so all this area in here. We know that we could just take the area of the outer circle and we would subtract out the area of the inner circle. So if this was an area of a washer problem, we would do the outer area minus the inner area, which would be the same as if we took an outer radius or a big radius and then we subtract it off the uh, area of the circle from using this inner radius. I'm going to call that little radius. Okay, so now using our area formula, we have pi r squared, so we'd have pi big radius squared minus pi little radius squared. And we see here that we have a pi in both of these, so we could pull out the pi to the front, and that leaves us with big radius squared minus little radius squared, and then we'd multiply by pi. Okay, so there is the 2D picture of our washer. Now, our washers um, have a certain degree of thickness, so it's really a cylinder with a hole. So now if we wanted to do the volume of one slice or one cross section, we're going to take this area that we just found up here, and we're going to then multiply it by some degree of thickness. So we're going to take pi times big radius squared minus little radius squared, and then we're going to multiply it by some height. Okay, well, as we said yesterday, our height, if we're looking back at our picture here, we have this cross section that we're taking out for um, measuring our volume, and that thickness of that washer, just like we did with the disk, that's going to either be a dx or it's going to be a dy. Okay, so in place of height, 
we will write that as a dx or a dy. Okay, so depending on the problem. Okay, and then we're going to sum those up. Okay, so now if we look at the formula that we have here given to us, similar to what you'll see in your book, we've got the volume of, here we've got pi big R squared minus little r squared times the height, which is the same thing as the thickness of each cross-section, which will be either dx or dy, depending on which direction we are revolving. Okay, and then here's the uh, same thing for if we go the other direction and have to use dy. Okay, so depending on which way you're stacking your washers, if you're stacking along the x-axis or the y-axis, that'll determine if you want to do dx or dy. Okay, so example one, we're going to find the volume, and our bounded region is y equals x plus 2, y equals x, x equals 0, and x equals 3. Okay, and we're going to revolve this about the x-axis. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plot the bounded region as we have before. Um, we had the line x plus 2, so we start here where y is equal to 2, and we have a slope of 1, so something like that. And then we also have the line y equals x, so now we're starting at the origin with the same slope. So there's our second curve, and then we have a boundary of x equals 0, so that was our y-axis, and we have a boundary of x equals 3. And there's the vertical line, x equals 3. So our original area problem is right here. And now we want to take this area and we are going to revolve it about the x-axis. Okay, so if we're revolving this direction, we will have the symmetric piece down here below. And then once we revolve, we get the You should get something that looks like that. So it's sort of a cone with a cone taken out. So uh, and it reminds me of one of those uh, snow cone cups maybe, but it's thicker. <laughs> okay, so now if we go ahead and we sketch in where our cross section would be, sketching in one cross section, very much like we did our disk problem. Um, except for here, now we see that we do have this hollowed out piece here in the center. So when we're looking at just the cross section pieces, here we've got something like this. Okay, so with a washer. Okay, so now from our cross section, we want to identify. Um, two things. One, we need to know if it is going to be a dx or a dy problem, and then we need to identify what is the big radius and what is the little radius. Okay, so we can we see that our washers will be stacked along the x-axis, so that means that this uh, height or thickness of each cross-section is going to be a dx. Next, we want to look and see where is the big radius and where is the little radius. So when we look at our washer, measuring from the outside down into the center of our washer, that is going to be our big R. And when we write out what big R is equal to, that's going to be equal to, again, like a Y top minus Y bottom. Okay, in this case, my Y top is this line here of X plus 2. And my y bottom is just the axis that I'm revolving around. So that is y equals 0. So for that should be a minus x plus 2 and then minus y bottom, which is 0. Okay, so there's our big radius. Now we want to see where is our little radius. So what are we taking out of our disk to form the washer? So here is our little radius. And same idea, little radius, we're going to take our y top minus y bottom. 
and y top is going to be this other line, y equals x. And our y bottom for the little radius is, again, the axis that we revolved around. So that would be y equals 0. And now we're ready to go ahead and write our equation for the volume. So remember, volume is equal to pi r squared times height. In this case, we're going to do pi. And for the radius of our washer, we need to take the difference in the two radii when they're being squared. So um, big R squared, we said that was equal to x plus 2 minus little r squared. We said little r was equal to x. And that is being multiplied by how thick each washer is, which was dx. And now the only thing left is we just need to know what are the limits of integration. So we are stacking these washers along the x-axis, and we are starting where x is equal to 0, and we're going all the way out to where x is equal to 3. So 0 up to 3 would be our limits of integration. Okay, so then from here, you would just have to multiply out and do all of your integrating. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Check your answer. You should get that you have 30 pi.